Okay guys, hey, welcome back here. So we'll, uh, I'm a glutton for punishment, obviously, because if, it's a, if, if, if I haven't got enough projects on the go, I've taken a um, couple smaller jobs in, so I thought maybe any of you guys out there that like uh, 47 Monarchs, you might want to take a look at this car. So uh, let's go in the shop and take a look and, and see how much more trouble I can get myself into it these, uh, these days. Okay, here we go, let's go. Okay. So you can probably hear the old girl running. What we got here is a good friend of mine, Corey. He likes to buy and sell cars all the time. And uh, this is one of the cars he's just bought recently within the last few months. It's a 47 Monarch. Kind of a rare little car. Monarch was Canadian only. You get a good look at the, uh, the grill there. Now what someone's done is they've taken out the old original, the old original flathead and they've put, uh, I think he said the motor was a 53 or 54 flathead it's the mercury flathead they put in it's got some it's got some fiend offenhauser heads in there look at that old girl she just listen to that she's just a purr and she's just a purr and she runs like a dream so there we go see the old badge right there monarch it's got the cool old mirrors i don't know why the antenna is red anyway but that's besides the point no it looks like a it runs good Anyway, we'll uh, take a glimpse at the motor here on the other side for you guys. So the whole story why this car is brought to me is Corey wants to, uh, <clears throat> underneath these cars, which I'll get a picture of later so you can take a look, they have knee action shocks. And he wants to take the knee action shocks off and he wants me to put a regular shock absorber on the front because it rides like an old buckboard. So we're going to fix that. And on the back, I don't know if you can see it, if I get back here a bit without tripping on all this shit in the shop. If you kind of take a look at it, the car is kind of dragging a bit in the back end. If you look at it, it's lower in the back than the front. And, uh, you know, that's probably, that's a cool thing if, it, if the car was chopped, in my opinion. I mean, it, it, that's just my opinion, right? I like cars that are a bit of tail draggers, but I like them when they're all chopped and, and, and that kind of shit, right? This car is not chopped, it's original. So Corey really doesn't like the fact that it's sitting lower in the back. So I did take a look underneath there and what's going on, the, the gentleman that owned it before him put a three inch lowering block in it. So we're just going to pull that lowering block out for Corey and then we've got that problem solved. Then the next thing we want to do is the fuel gauge isn't working so we're going to put a new sender in the tank and replace the gauge on the, uh, on the dash possibly and try and get the fuel gauge working. And then Corey would like us to wire a stereo in. So uh, take a look here. The old line in the steering wheel there, right in the center. It's got the beautiful dashboard with all the chrome still in there. Seat is nicely upholstered. So some old school, some old school upholstery going on there. Nice and comfy to sit on. Door panels are all done to match. Looks really good. You know, looks good up inside. Headliner's all nice. And of course, there's those stupid fucking things. I'm sorry, people. If you've got these dolls, I'm sorry. I cannot stand these dolls. What do they got to do with car shows? Why are they propped up against a bumper in a car show? Every time I see these fucking things, I just want to kick them. I want to punt them like they're a fucking football. God, I hate those things. Get rid of those things, Corey. I'll burn them son of a bitches for you. Anyway, <laughs> jeez. So let's go over. Holy God. I think my whole day, now I'm just pissed off for the day. Anyway, nah, just joking you. Anyway, so here's the back of the car. It looks pretty cool. We got the... uh. It's got the nice dual exhaust happening on there. It's got a nice little rumble on the back. So anyway, so that's what we're gonna do on this. We're gonna get this sucker ripped apart and get this attempted today and see if we can't get it out the door because we don't, you know, we, we, we gotta be, uh, we gotta get things on the go here, full time garage. And if that isn't enough for you, look what I also brought in. Here's a 56 Chevy pickup. Now this gentleman is another friend of mine, Ken. He brings this truck out to me once a year and once a year he tackles the mechanical. Um, and you know what? He's doing it right. Um, it's, it's, it's a neat truck. It's a big back window truck. You know, it, it's got an okay body on it. It's a pretty solid truck, but you know, it's got a lot of issues too. But that's okay because he, he's fixing it slowly. Now, when he bought the truck, it was already clipped. You can see it's got quite the rate going on. I think someone used a Nova clip. I'm not sure. What I've done for him in the last couple of years is I rewired the whole truck, put all new wiring in it. I did all the ball joints, tie rod ends, idler arm. I did all that kind of work to it. Um, last year we put a 700R tranny in it, so it had the overdrive. Um, I did that for him last year. I also put, this was a pain in the ass. Don't want to ever do that job again. If you're out there watching Ken, he knows I don't want to do it again. Anyway, we put the one piece glass in and of course I put power, power windows in it. 
So kind of a pain, but well, I did it. What the hell, right? We can do anything. Or at least we think we can. So there's a low car shifter down in there. Oh, and I put this tilt column and he had a tilt column out of a, uh, I guess it's a, what is that? Is that Oldsmobile, guys? I think that's Oldsmobile there. We had a tilt column there, so we put that in. So anyway, what it's here for now is he's got a radiator leak. We're going to take care of the rad for him. And um, he's got a few exhaust leaks on it. A couple little exhaust leaks. He wants me to look at the speedo cable. Something's going on with the cable on the speedo. I guess when I did the tranny, I don't know what's going on. It, it, he says there's something up with it, kind of bouncing around or something. So we'll take a look at that too. Uh, just a few little things. But you know, he's going about the, he's going about this truck the right way. He's taking care of all the mechanical, getting all the running gear stuff done. And then what he's going to do is there, and then from there he'll worry about the paint and body. And that really is what it should be about. It should be about the safety issue. I mean, you know what? The truck's a cool little driver. And, and, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's a fun, cool little driver. So we got that one we got to take care of too. So besides all the other jobs that are going on in the shop here, we got that. And, and there will be a video coming up here pretty soon, guys. Let me turn this around. There will be a video coming up here pretty soon of the 57 GMC. Yes, it is done. I got to wash it, polish it, out the door it goes. But it's raining today, and I'm hoping to get it done this week. Um, so that's about it. And here we go. We'll quickly show you Truckenstein. Truckenstein is sitting there up on the hoist. As you can see, Truckenstein is all primered. We finished all the bodywork off on the cab, and it is in its uh, two-part filler primer. And what it basically needs now is it needs to have a, uh, it needs to be blocked and sanded, maybe a light primer again, and then it is ready. The cab is done and ready for paint. And of course, we did all the texture spray down low. We did it down here. We're not going to see the firewall. Of course, is primered because we're going to be, you know, that's going to be getting painted. We got the texture spray done here. We got all the, you know, we didn't, we didn't get carried away. This frame didn't, you know, he doesn't want to take it off the frame, so we just texture sprayed the frame too. You can see inside, we did all behind where the gas tank would go, it's texture sprayed. It's all primed inside. We primed the whole cab in and out, up on the, up on the headliner area, that's all texture sprayed. So she's getting ready to go. What we're going to do is we're going to be cutting this, um, we're going to be cutting this seat brace out of here because he's got a newer seat out of a newer truck that fits in here beautiful. But I got to get rid of this and I got to make some leg extensions on this on this other seat. And if you come around here, we'll come around here and we'll take a look. If you remember, I made that little that little boxing I was telling you about because up on the firewall is where he's putting his battery. He doesn't want his battery under the floorboard. So what I did, like I say, I didn't fill this in. He wanted me to weld it up. I, I put that box in there and um, I did put a drain hole. I was only joking about the beer situation to all you guys out there about putting beer in here. But I did put a drain hole because it is down low. If there ever is any kind of water or moisture in there, at least it can run out. This is a good place to hide personal things like maybe your camera, your wallet or something. If you're going to go for a jog in a park and you don't want to leave it out, you know, I don't know. I don't even know what you can hide in there. All sorts of stuff. You can keep tools in there, whatever you want to keep in there. But you know what? Why, why not keep it there? Why not? Why get rid of that? Because you still got that on the floor anyway. And when you put your carpet over top, you'll never know. So that's a good little cubby hole that we got going there. So, so there, let me get back here. So there's Chuck and Stein. Chuck and Stein is, uh, is getting to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the passenger side door done this week, all the body work done on it, get it in primer. Then we're going to get the seat hopefully mounted up in there. And then uh, we're going to, um, well, I guess we're onto the sheet metal. I guess after that, we're onto the sheet metal. Chuck and Stein is coming together. We're getting a lot of jobs done here. Okay, so. Okay guys, so uh, thanks for watching the videos. Uh, I'm waiting for Dave to show up. He should be here anytime soon and we'll get to it. So that's it. So to all you guys out there, thanks again. Big thumbs up to all you guys. See how I got that thumb on, in line this time? Got it in line. I figured it out. Fuck, it only took me a year, but I figured it out. Okay. Anyway guys, you have a good day. Remember, it's always a good time at all time. See you later.